So, who exactly are these hooded people? The people in charge of the Scroll of Memory. Well, many people have guessed that they are the Ten Kings of the Underworld. And while this technically isn't confirmed, in the credits of the Season 4 special, the one who was in charge is referred to as King One. So it is pretty certain that they are indeed the Ten Kings of the Underworld. The Ten Kings of the Underworld, in Chinese mythology, are in charge of judging the dead. Each king is in charge of a different court, with the first king being the one who receives the dead and determines where they go, and the next eight kings then punish people for different crimes. Finally, the last king turns the wheel of transmigration, which takes the dead into their new existence and rebirth. Now, the ten kings are in Jenny to the West, and these are their names in the Anthony C. Yi translation. But different translations and sources give them other names. In Journey to the West, the Ten Kings of the Underworld actually show up a bunch of times. Most significantly, when they try to take Sun Wukong to his death. But he ends up removing his name, and the name of all his monkeys, from the Book of Life and Death. There's also a whole arc about this emperor called Taizong, who the Ten Kings of the Underworld bring to life. Then. The Ten Kings of the Underworld try to help tell the difference between Sun Wukong and the Six-Eared Macaque, because no one can tell which one is the real Sun Wukong. What is interesting is that, in Monkey Kid, the Ten Kings are in charge of the Scroll of Memory. This isn't a thing in the novel or mythology, but they likely have this duty over the scroll because people's memories get wiped when they are reborn in the next life. Plus, the Ten Kings in mythology have a duty to punish people, and Azure did say the scroll was used to punish people. Now, in Monkey Kid, this king, who seems to be the one in charge, says this. If it comes to light that any of this party were involved, you can believe the consequences will be dire. So, it seems at least one of the kings betrayed the others, and likely released Azure and gave him the scroll. Since the Ten Kings have jurisdiction over the Scroll of Memory, this king likely messed with Azure's memories. Just a quick recap, we know Azure's memories have been messed with because Sun Wukong asked him how he got out of the Underworld, and he couldn't remember that, nor could he remember how he got the scroll. And earlier, in Season 4 Episode 10, the Jade Emperor himself asked Azure how he escaped, and if he had questioned it. Yet Asher just ignores this, like he has been brainwashed. Anyway, it seems this king has been messing with people's memories for a long time, as there's significant evidence that, in Monkey Kid, various people's memories have indeed been messed with. First of all, it seems that Pigsy, Tang, and Sandy are actually the original pilgrims, but they have no memory of this. Now I know that, in Season 4, the characters themselves seem to be thinking that they are the descendants of the original pilgrims. However, in Season 2, Episode 8, Sandy sees some monkeys that have been beaten up, and he has a flashback to some war. But then we briefly see him have a flashback to seeing Zhu Bajie knocked out. If Sha Wu Jing was just Sandy's ancestor, no way could he have that memory. Anyway, there are other things indicating that Piggy, Tang, and Sandy are not reincarnations or descendants, but literally the original pilgrims, which I discussed in this video. Also, in the season 4 intro, we see all these flashback scenes, but these moments are surrounded by the scroll of memory. I think this could be hinting at these memories being altered, especially as these scenes in the intro don't match up with what we see in the show. For example, this is a scene from the intro, and there is a near identical scene in the show, but there are some big differences, like how the intro version has Azure wearing the outfit he wears when the Brotherhood is formed, and the version in the show has him wearing his celestial outfit. Then there's this scene where the Brotherhood are laughing, however we never see Sun Wukong passed out in the show, and the closest equivalent scene actually shows up in two episodes. So it is weird they reused animation in these episodes, but they didn't use the scenes in the intro. Another thing is, in Journey to the West, the book Monkey Kid is based on, 
Sun Wukong has six sworn brothers, and these are their names. And I also included different translations of their names. So all up, in Journey to the West, including Sun Wukong, there are seven sworn brothers. But in Monkey Kid, Sun Wukong only had five sworn brothers, making six all up. Now, out of Sun Wukong's sworn brothers in Monkey Kid, only the Demon Ball King was one of his sworn brothers in the book. Although Macaque, Azure, and Peng all have names similar to the original sworn brothers in the book. But, in the book, the Azure Lion, the Golden Winged Peng, and the Six Yid Macaque are separate characters to the Lion Camel King, the Peng Demon King, and the Macaque King. But, I was thinking that, in Monkey Kid, Sun Wukong's sworn brothers were the same as in the book, and all their memories have been changed and some of them were replaced. As, in Season 4 Episode 2, we see the Brotherhood sitting at a table. However, even though there are six of them, there is an extra chair. That makes seven chairs. Seven chairs for the original seven sworn brothers in the book. We also see the extra chair in another frame. So in two different frames, there are seven chairs. Now, at the end of the flashback, the extra chair did disappear, but it appearing in two scenes makes it seem intentional. Now, here's where things get crazy. Because, even though there are ten kings of the underworld, in Monkey Kid, we only see nine figures. We have the one who seems to be in charge, and he is talking to the others. But there are only eight others he is talking to. So these are the kings, but where is the tenth king? Now, you might think that the missing king is definitely the traitor, because we see this scene right after. But this scene is clearly a flashback scene, as we hear the king in charge talking over it, and it is clearly a continuation of what we saw in Season 4 Episode 1. So this is what we saw at the beginning of Season 4 Episode 1. One of the kings goes to the scroll and takes a look at a piece, and then the scene we see at the end of the season 4 special is clearly a direct continuation of the first scene, which means it's a flashback. It being a flashback means the traitor may have been one of the kings who were in attendance here. Meaning, even though one king is missing, the missing king may not be the traitor. The king in charge also said, if it comes to light that any of this party were involved, you can believe the consequences will be dire which implies he is talking to all of the kings. I mean, surely he would notice if a king was missing. So, it could be that the missing 10th king, who is not among them, is the traitor. Or, the missing 10th king might be dead, and the traitorous king is avenging them. If that is the case, then I'd say the missing 10th king could be Lady Bone Demon. Or, if the missing king actually is the traitor, then I think Lady Bone Demon is the traitor's sister. Either way, Lady Bone Demon is connected to the Ten Kings, because there is undeniable evidence that she's connected to the Scroll of Memory, which is owned by the Ten Kings. First of all, at separate times, Lady Bone Demon says to Sun Wukong and Macaque that she would erase the world's memory of them. you betray me again, one misstep, one failure in any way, I will erase the very memory of you. If Lady Bone Demon was a king of the underworld, or a sister of a king, she would have access to the Scroll of Memory, and she could alter the Scroll of Memory and erase people's memories. She could even erase everyone's memories of a certain person. It can't be a coincidence that Lady Bone Demon talks about erasing people's memories twice, all these people's memories seem to have been messed with, and then we find out about the Scroll of Memory. But it gets crazier, because the Scroll of Memory has all these symbols on it, and these same symbols are on the walls where the full scroll is kept, in the underworld. But these symbols are also the symbols that Lady Bone Demon uses and the symbols that have been constantly associated with her. We see them on the skeleton key. We see them in Lady Bone Demon's crypt. We see them when she uses her powers to possess Sun Wukong. We see them on the compass she gave Macaque. And we see them when she uses her bone mech, etc, etc. The point is, 
Lady Bone Demon constantly used the same symbols that are on the scroll of memory. Now, I did check, and no other person who uses magic and spells and stuff has ever used the same symbols Lady Bone Demon used. Well, except for the Ten Kings, who are entrusted with looking after the scroll. They used some of these symbols when they were putting the curse on the scroll. We also see that the Book of Life and Death, which Sun Wukong crossed his name out of, is written with these symbols. So, these symbols have only ever been used by Lady Bone Demon and the Ten Kings, and the only other places they have appeared is in the Underworld, on the scroll, and in the Book of Life and Death, both of which are kept by the Ten Kings. Now you might be wondering what these symbols are. Well, these symbols are actually the symbols for the Chinese zodiac, but these zodiac symbols aren't just any zodiac symbols. They are written in Oracle Bone Script. Oracle Bone Script is ancient Chinese writing found on animal bones or turtle shells, which were used in divination in ancient China. Essentially, used to find out someone's destiny, and that is Lady Bone Demon's whole thing. So, Lady Bone Demon is definitely linked to the Scroll of Memory in some way, as she is strongly associated with the symbols on the scroll. Plus the symbols are literally called Oracle Bone Script symbols, linking to the two main things about Lady Bone Demon, destiny slash fate, and bones. So it makes a lot of sense for her to have been a king of the underworld, or related to one. So, Lady Bone Demon is definitely connected to the Scroll and the Ten Kings. She uses the same symbols the Kings of the Underworld use, symbols that are literally called Oracle Bone Script. She says she can alter people's memories, which anyone who had access to the Scroll could likely do. And it seems that only the Kings of the Underworld have access to the Scroll, and they would also have the knowledge to properly use it. And then there's the fact that, not only does Lady Bone Demon's whole bone and skeleton thing link to death and the underworld, but she literally brought Macaque back from the underworld after he was killed by Sun Wukong. Who else could bring someone back from the underworld but a king of the underworld? Or someone with close connections to a king? And in Journey to the West, the Ten Kings of the Underworld can indeed bring people back from the dead. Now, the thing is that we know Lady Bone Demon has family. At least, she does in the book. When she is first introduced in Journey to the West, she spots Tong Sanjong and says to herself, For several years, my relatives have been talking about a Tong monk. This is the only mention of her family in Journey to the West, but in Monkey Kid we see this mural in Season 2 Episode 5. Lady Bone Demon is in the middle, with four figures surrounding her. Now, who are these people? Well, I believe they are her family. Now, I know some people might say that the other figures in the mural are Lady Bone Demon's other forms, as we see her shapeshift into other forms in the Season 3 special. However, the figures in the mural don't match the form she shapeshifted into in the Season 3 special, which is important, because Lady Bone Demon's forms in the Season 3 special were clearly specifically chosen to be the same three forms she took in the book. So, it could be that the Ten Kings of the Underworld are related to each other. So, she is one king, and the rest are her family, meaning the four other people in the mural could be some of the kings. Or, Lady Bone Demon is not a king, but she is related to one. And this guy is probably him. At least, I think this person is a guy. Now, let's talk a bit more about the traitor, and why I think he is related to Lady Bone Demon. So, I think the treacherous king is King Yama. King Yama is the fifth king, also known as King Yen or King Yen Lo, but as he is more commonly known as King Yama, that is what I will refer to him as. But, even though he is the fifth king, in mythology he is also the ruler of the underworld. It is a bit confusing because there are different mythologies and interpretations, but it seems that the mythology of King Yama, ruler of the underworld, evolved into the Ten Kings. And, in some versions, King Yama was the first king of the underworld, but was actually demoted to fifth king because he was too lenient. For those who are unfamiliar, being demoted is the opposite of being promoted, so he was downgraded and put into a lower rank. So, it would make a lot of sense for King Yama to be the traitor, because he feels he was unjustly demoted, 
just because he was merciful. Plus, he is the most famous of the Ten Kings, so it would make sense for him to have a prominent role. Now, a primary source where this information comes from is the Jade Record, which I found an English translation of. In the Jade Record, King Yama says the reason he was demoted is because he was too compassionate to those who have died innocently, and he let them return back to the world of the living to vindicate themselves. Now, remember how Lady Bone Demon brought Macaque back to life? Macaque who was murdered? What if Lady Bone Demon and King Yama worked together to bring people back to life? And it actually makes a lot of sense for Lady Bone Demon to have aided King Yama in bringing innocent people back to life, since her whole thing was that those in charge didn't care for the suffering of mortals. But you and your advisors have shown me how little you care for the interests of mortals. Uh, mortals? But like I said, I think Lady Bone Demon was either a king of the underworld or related to one. And there is some more interesting information about King Yama. There are many mythologies and interpretations regarding him, but some say he has a twin sister, called Yami. In fact, Yama's name actually means twin. It could very well be that Lady Bone Demon's true identity in Monkey Kid is as King Yama's twin sister. Although Yami's mythology doesn't really fit Lady Bone Demon, I think it could work especially as there are various mythologies surrounding her that don't all fit together anyway. Plus, Yami is also referred to as the Lady of Life. While Lady Bone Demon does seem rather death-themed, the fact she brought Macaque, and potentially others, back from the dead, could have earned her the title Lady of Life in the Monkey Kid universe. Additionally, while Yama is a king of the underworld, some legends state that he and his twin sister, Yami, jointly ruled the underworld, both as kings. So, my idea is that Lady Bone Demon was King Yama's sister, and they both ruled the underworld. Now, if Lady Bone Demon was Yami, King Yama's sister, who ruled alongside him, then perhaps they both brought back people who had been killed, like Macaque, but they both got in trouble for this. Of course, King Yama was demoted, but maybe Lady Bone Demon was actually fired, stripped of being a king, possibly because her crimes included others that were deemed more severe. It could be that, if King Yama is the traitor, not only does he feel resentful for being demoted, but he wants to avenge Lady Bone Demon and finish her work. Of note is also the fact that King Yama keeps records of people's previous lives and also uses the karma mirror which shows someone and their karma from a previous life. This all relates to memories, giving King Yama a close link to the scroll of memory in Monkey Kid, more than the other kings. Perhaps he was the one who designed it before he was demoted. So, in conclusion, there are 10 kings of the underworld, but we only saw 9 in Monkey Kid, and I think the missing 10th king is Lady Bone Demon, who is dead. I think this because the various characters' memories have been messed with, and at separate times, Lady Bone Demon says to Sun Wukong and Macaque that she would erase the world's memory of them, and the symbols on the scroll are the exact same symbols Lady Bone Demon uses. So far, it seems only the underworld, including the kings of the underworld, uses these symbols, but also Lady Bone Demon. And then there's the fact that the language of these symbols is literally called Oracle Bone Script. And Lady Bone Demon brought Macaque back to life, something that only kings of the underworld should be able to do. And I think she is likely King Yama's sister, Yami, the Lady of Life, who some legends say ruled beside King Yama as his equal. And of course, King Yama is likely the traitor as he feels resentful since he got demoted for sending people back to the world of the living something Lady Bone Demon probably did with him. Anyway, thanks for watching. I just want to say that I have a shop where I sell Journey to the West themed pins and keychains, including Monkey King, the Sixed Macaque, and Monkey King Staff. I also have cute animal themed pins and keychains like the Donut Cat, the Kiwi Kiwi, the Avocado, and the Ice Cream Cat.